Hi, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the two to four player game Orbis, designed by Tim Armstrong and published by Space Cowboys, who helped sponsor this video. It's not enough that you have to build an entire universe, you also have to gather the right worshipers and do a better job than everybody else. Look, no one said being a god would be easy, but at least learning the rules doesn't have to be difficult. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, collect the region tiles, which will all have this back, and then sort them into their one, two, and three levels based on the number of stars found here. If you have four players, you'll use all of the tiles. But if you have three players, remove any showing white stars here. And if you only have two players, remove the ones with red stars as well, which we'll be doing in this video. Now shuffle each level separately face down to the side and deal nine face up from the level one stack into the center of the play area. These are the god tiles and you'll shuffle them dealing as many as the number of players plus one and then returning the rest to the box. So in this two player game, we'd have three. You'll also find numbered temple tokens and in a four player game, you'll set out the two, four, seven, and 11, keeping the number nine in the box. For three players, instead use two, four, and nine. And with a two player game, as we have here, only use the two and the seven. Nearby, also set out the worshiper cubes along with these cancellation and reduction tokens. These trays don't come with the game, but I'm using them here to help me organize things on the table. And that's the setup. In Orbis, players will be claiming tiles from the center of the table in order to build a universe in front of them that will hopefully score them the most points by the end of the game. The game is played over 15 rounds, and during each round, each player will get a turn, starting with the youngest player and then going clockwise around the table. And on your turn, you will claim either a single region or god tile. If you decide to take a region tile, you'll pick one of the nine that are face up, and you'll notice that each of them have their own predominant color based on their background. And before you take a tile, you'll first place a matching colored worshiper cube from the supply onto all of the tiles adjacent to it, not including diagonals. Over the course of the game, several worshippers will be spread across the tiles, and these are not a limited supply. In the rare case that you run out of a color, just use a suitable replacement. After placing new worshippers, you'll collect any that happen to be on the tile you've chosen. In this case, there aren't any. But on a future turn, a player taking this tile would get the white cube here and any cubes you gain are then placed beside you in an area known as your realm. Next, you'll need to pay the cost of the tile you wish to claim, which is shown in the area here at the top of it. This one doesn't have an additional cost, but the one here requires both a blue and a red cube. These represent the worshippers that you must spend from your realm back to the supply, and you can even spend cubes that you just took off of the tile you are claiming. Sometimes you'll see a multicolor cube cost, which just means you need to spend a cube of any color. Now, if you don't have the cubes to pay, you can still take the tile, but you'll have to flip it to its wilderness side. And we'll see the effect that this has on your universe in a moment. But whether you had to flip the tile or were able to pay to keep it face up, you'll then put it into your realm, which again is the area in front of you. Over the course of the 15 rounds of the game, the tiles you collect must be placed so they form exactly this shape. So five tiles on the bottom row, then four, then three, and two. When you're first placing a tile, it must go into the bottom row. And this bottom row can be made up of any combination of colors. You just have to ensure that each new tile is connected on at least one side. You also don't have to wait until you have a full bottom row before starting a higher one but any new tile that you place above must have two tiles directly beneath it. And at least one of the tiles below it must be the same color as the one you are adding. So I could put this tile here, or even this one instead, but not this one. The exception to this rule are wildernesses. Remember, you get these when you can't pay the cost of a tile and are forced to flip it over. But even if you could pay the cost here, you can choose to flip it over, and in either case, this now counts as any color, which you're reminded of here. And that means it can always be placed above any two tiles. And that also means that any other tile can be put above it. This, however, is the symbol for victory points, and each wilderness in your universe is worth minus one point at the end of the game. But now let's go back to our original example and put this tile into our universe face up. 
You'll now check the area here, which may show certain effects that need to be resolved. So let's go through the different symbols and learn how they work. Any that show a plus symbol mean that you now collect the number of worshipers shown directly below it in that color from the supply. So this would let me take two white worshipers. If you see a multicolored background, then you can pick any color of cube that you want. Some regions will show a victory point value here, and you'll gain that at the end of the game for having this tile in your universe. When you place a tile with this infinity symbol, which is known as a farm, then you collect the matching reduction token. And this means that for the rest of the game, you'll ignore all worshiper costs of that specific color. So for example, if I had this in my universe and was later trying to buy this tile, it would cost me a yellow and a blue worshiper, but I would not have to pay either of these greens. However, these cannot be used to cancel multicolor costs, so I'd still have to spend one other cube of any color. This is a village symbol, and when you take one of these tiles, you must discard the indicated number of worshippers from your realm, but it doesn't matter what color they are. If you don't have enough cubes to remove, or you simply don't want to, just take one of these cancellation tiles and place it over the points here. This means that although you get to keep the tile face up in your universe, it won't score you anything at the end of the game. This is the symbol for a volcano. When one is placed in your universe, you must immediately destroy this number of worshippers in the indicated color. So four in this case. These do not come from your personal supply, but instead from the eight tiles that remain face up in the center of the table. And you can choose which combination of tiles to take them from, returning them to the supply. You must always destroy the full amount shown, but if you can't because there are not enough available, or because you simply choose not to, then you must put a cancellation token on the points here, again, meaning that this will not score you anything at the end of the game. If you see a tile with two arrows beneath it, it's an irrigation symbol, and when you put this tile into your universe, at least one of the tiles beneath it must be the color shown here. If that's impossible for you to do, or you simply choose not to, again, cover the points showing here with a cancellation token. An effect showing a tile with arrows all around it, representing a forest, or these showing temples, may score you points at the end of the game, so we'll see how those work a little bit later. That said, we've now covered all the tile effects that are resolved when they are placed, and after you've added a tile to your realm, you'll check to see how many worshipper cubes you have. During your turn, you can have any number of them, but now you must discard any as necessary so that you have no more than 10. In this case, we only have two, so we're fine. But if instead we had a total of 12, then we would need to discard two of them. Now, before we do that, I'll just point out that at any time during your turn, including right now, you can exchange three worshipers of the same color for any one in the supply. And again, you can do this exchange at any time, even to help pay for a tile you're taking during your turn. The final step after claiming a region tile is to draw the top one from the lowest level stack still remaining here, putting it face up into the now empty space. So once all the level one tiles are gone, you'll draw from the level two stack, and once those are used up, you'll draw from level three. On your turn, instead of taking a region tile, you can take a god tile from the ones here. You then put it in your realm off to the side. You don't attach it to the other tiles in your universe. But these may provide you with points at the end of the game or provide you with other benefits. For example, if you have the Goddess of Love, you immediately gain five worshippers of any color. And at the end of the game, you'll also get one more point. On the other hand, if you had the Goddess of Fire, it says that if you are among the players who have the most validated volcano tiles, that is, ones that were not canceled with one of these tokens, then you'll earn three points. I won't go over all the gods here, but you can find them explained in the rulebook, or you can pause here to read them over. The key rule to understand with god tiles is that you can only take one and you'll spend your whole turn to do it, but once you have a god tile, you cannot claim another one later. God tiles, unlike regions, are not replenished after they are collected. Either way, after a player has taken a region or a god tile, the next player in clockwise order takes their turn and around and around you go until the game ends with everyone's universe complete being made up of 14 regions and one god tile. Now players count all of the points showing on their universe tiles, including any from their god, but losing one point for every wilderness. 
There are also two types of tiles with effects on their left side that only resolve at the end of the game, so let's go over those now. If you see a tile symbol with arrows surrounding it, it will now score you points if you have any combination of at least the number and color of tiles shown here in positions surrounding it. If it shows two colors like this, you don't need to have both, but at least one of them. So in this case where I only have one blue and then one wild, which could be anything, I won't be able to score these three points because I need at least three tiles surrounding it of either of those colors. However, if my universe had looked like this, then I would have the required tiles surrounding this one and I would gain an additional three points. At the end of the game, you'll also have the players count all of these temple symbols that they have in their universe. The player who has the most gets to pick any one of the tokens here, which will score them the indicated number of points. Then the player with the next most temples takes a token and so on. Now if there's a tie between players for the number of temples they have, the one with a white tile in their universe that has the highest number printed here wins the tie and picks first. However, if a player has no temple symbols in their universe at all, then they cannot claim a token. With their total scores calculated, the player with the most is now the winner. And if there's a tie, the tied player with the most worshiper cubes is the winner. And if there's still a tie, the tied players share the victory. And that's everything you need to know to play Orbis. If you have any questions at all about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, other videos, pictures, and lots more over on its page at Board Game Geek, which I'll put a link to in the description below. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.